Hey, good evening, good evening, good night, good day. I almost thought it was nighttime. Um, we we are here this afternoon, and I'm pleased to welcome you as City Manager Greg Lewis uh, for the City of Lebanon to uh, what may be our annualized uh, Public Works panel. And we're going to talk about Public Works today uh, because it's spring and summer is close, believe it or not, it's getting closer. And uh, our activity level in our public works uh, operations is, is, is ramping up. I mean, they, there's work all year round at Public Works. It never stops. And, of course, we all know uh, how much, you know, when we have a snow season, you know, how much we rely on our Public Works uh, team. Uh, and it's no different as we go into spring or summer. Their, their work just changes. And I thought it would be good today for people here in our community and around the region to hear uh, kind of what our forecasts are in terms of our Public Works activities coming up. Uh, we do this because we'd like to give direct information to you, uh, the, the people who watch this program and, and watch it on uh, CATV and also on our websites. Um, so we're going to start it off. I'm going to go, I'm going to start, um, I always start with a little tale about ourselves, you know. Um, the thing about my, my first experiences with public works goes back considerably. I, you know, been doing it for 25 years as, and, and, and one of the first things I did was uh, we had uh, 2,200 square miles in the jurisdiction I was managing and uh, we would go on the annual and this would be the time of the year we'd go, which was great. It was the annual public works tour of this large area. And it was in Beltrami County, Minnesota, and it was uh, our roads were pretty bad. And uh, so we would get into vehicles, and I would bring all the uh, county commissioners and myself and the public works director and people from uh, all the divisions of the public works, and we'd get in it, and the vehicles, usually they were buses or vans, and we'd drive throughout the countryside, and people would know because we advertised that it was the tour. And it was known as the tour, and then they would meet us on the road. So we would drive along until we found really bad roads, and then we would get out and uh, stop, and there'd be a large group of people very unhappy about their roads, and they would describe <laughs> describe for us all the all the different issues that they had on the roads, and they would show us where the where the really uh, roads have washed out, and they'd show where culverts were not, and uh, we, we spent the day uh, looking in, in at the roads and taking pictures of the roads and and being advised about roads because that w was what we used to base our road program as part of our CIP program, uh, and that's how we ended up defining it. It was interesting trips out in the countryside, Mike. Uh, do you have any tales to tell as our public works director today? Did you ever go on a road tour? Uh, plenty of road tours. I probably don't have as exciting a tale as you do about <laughs> going out and checking the roads. Um, I'm sure Jim and Don probably have more exciting things. Well, we bring about. sandwiches along, so and we also brought the media along. So we brought the reporters along too because we we just bring, we was open meetings, so it wasn't we had the majority of a quorum, so we we would have to we bring the reporters along, so they would go on the ride too. Sometimes they'd get a little tired of it though. It wasn't exactly a fast-moving story. <laughs> <laughs> but could you give us a little bit of overview uh, and uh, as we go in terms of our expectations this year? Sure. Uh, as you mentioned, um, every year seems to be a busy year in public works. We uh, typically have a lot on the plate, um, not many months to get, them, get it done, uh, the major construction projects. Um, this year, uh, the ones that probably the public will notice the most will be the next phase of the CSO project, which is CSO 9. Um, that's going to be in West Lebanon, uh, Maple Street, uh, Pleasant Street, Orcott, Farman, and then there's an upper part that's Tenley, Powers, and Whitcomb. So those projects, uh, the project will be bid hopefully in early June. So mid to late summer construction will start there. Um, another major project is the replacement of the sewer line on 120, uh, Little Heater Road, part of Heater Road 120 and out Etna Road. Um, we've got some deficient infrastructure there. Uh, so that project um, again will be bid um, this summer probably mid to late summer going into construction. Um, so those are two major projects that 
that will be very uh, front and center for the public. They'll um, be experiencing um, pretty intimately as they travel. Um, other projects that we have, uh, Jim and Don uh, can talk about their respective ones, but at the landfill, uh, we're continuing construction of phase 2C of the line landfill, adding another cell to the landfill. Um, there's an expansion of the landfill maintenance garage. We co-locate at landfill the utilities group and um, we're expanding um, offices, office area um, and um, the restrooms, locker rooms there. Um, we're continuing to do a sewer system evaluation, which is part of our EPA um, consent decree, where we go out and we have to um, actually go out and identify every manhole, every structure, and the, the lines themselves, clean them, and develop a maintenance plan and a replacement, a CIP plan, to EPA's satisfaction. Um, a state project, which the public will also um, be aware of, is the replacement of the bridge between New Hampshire and Vermont on Bridge Street. Uh, that is, um, I think they're advertising that in May. Mm. So that project will begin construction. And we've got some other projects that are still in design, mechanic street reconstruction. Um, people can be prepared 2016. That's supposed to go to, or is scheduled to go to construction. So we've got those and plenty of other smaller projects that you know we all do just in terms of maintenance so and that's a, lot a going on. busy busy lineup um, <coughs> and maybe we'll come back as we, we a lot to cover and we may come back and delve into some of those a little deeper yep. but um, as Mike said we have we're pleased to have our managers here for our water plant and for our wastewater plant and um, I'd like to have them as I always do uh, ask the, the persons who come to our show to make, can mention a little bit about um, you know their background, how they got into their role, uh, how they got into this business. Uh, I think people out there, you know, in a tough times, are looking for, you know, if I wanted to get into work uh, and find a way to, you know, go up through the through the uh, my efforts to, in places of interest to me, how do I do it? You know, that's a really big big question for our our our, our younger generation just out of school or you know, ready to leave home and they're trying to find their way and so that's why I think it's useful to hear for people to hear kind of how people got where they're at. So we'll, we'll let you introduce yourselves and then your, your title and then just talk a little bit about how your background, Jim, and, um, and then we'll do the same uh, for okay. Don. Um, well, Go I'm ahead. Jim Andrews and uh, the water superintendent for the city of Lebanon and I've been doing this here in the city of Lebanon for a little over 10 years. Prior to that I was uh, in Colorado and um, I've worked out there since 76 and pretty much I started out in the wastewater field and went wastewater, water and then I became uh, uh, lucky enough to get into a managerial uh, kind of a management level of you know for um, drinking water and then went to managing a system where it was water and wastewater and uh, got a pretty good background and then um, after about 28 years of doing that I, I worked for a nonprofit in Denver, the largest uh, American Water Works Association oh, nice. mm -hmm. uh, where I was a small systems helpline guy and uh, that was pretty enjoyable but I wanted to get back out in the field after yes. spending mm -hmm. a little bit of time there I wanted to get into the field. Uh, Lebanon had an opening and I Decided to mm -hmm. try that. And do you have roots here in the area? Yes, I do in New Hampshire. I'm originally from New Hampshire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I uh, got into this field in a way I was working at, uh, when I got out of high school, I went to work in a paper mill. And then going into the transition to wastewater was fairly easy because, you know, they figured it was. Yeah, could stand the smell of air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you guys have yeah. come from little smelly places. I gotta admit yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, the uh, yeah, 
it was it was good. Yeah. Uh, as far as you enjoy your work then? Yes, I do. Yeah. And yeah. as far as getting into the field, I really didn't have much of a problem uh, getting into the field. But it's a lot of self motivated. Mm -hmm. um, you have to find your niche and uh, work towards it. Um, there's state certification involved, and there's a lot of information on the internet about uh, water and wastewater fields. If you're interested, uh, I, in the water quality report that I put out every year, yes, I have some contact information. Uh, anybody could contact me for the yeah. information. And, that's 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 um, really neat. That's really neat. Now I'm going to have. Uh, I'm first. I think I will do is we'll have Don do. You know, Don. I'd like to have you kind of describe that, and then we're going to go back to. To Jim, and then about what, what the water plant does. So why don't you give a little introduction on yourself, Don, and then we'll, we're gonna then I'll, we'll make the round again between the two of you. Okay. Um, my name is Don Shagan. I'm the superintendent of the wastewater treatment plant in West Lebanon. Um, I started in this field um, in 1978. I've been in wastewater treatment ever since. Um, graduated college with an environmental sciences degree and transitioned into working in the laboratory. Um, my first position was field sampling, going out into the collection system, mm -hmm. grabbing samples. It was a wastewater treatment plant in New Jersey, a large regional wastewater plant, served uh, 43 communities in northern New Jersey. Um, I started in the laboratory, as I started to say, worked up to um, supervision. Um, but my wife and I preferred to live in the country versus oh, yeah. mm -hmm. northern New Jersey. Uh -huh. And um, I landed a job in Lebanon in 1988. Um, started out at the bottom as an operator and a lab technician. Uh -huh. um, worked my way into the chemist's position, which uh, at the time it was called chemist, but it was similar to our current position of chief of quality assurance. Oh, okay. Um, working with the industries to mm -hmm. manage what they discharge to us, overseeing the laboratory. And then in 19, don't know the exact years, about 13 years ago, I became superintendent of the plant. So, so that's, that's quite a good tenure. That's congratulations. Thank you. Um, so now we'll go back to Jim about, tell us about what happens to the water plant. I think people just turn the faucet and the water comes out. And that, that's the kind of simpleton I am. Uh, I think there's a little more to that at the water plant, so maybe just share with us about what happens at the water plant. Well, um, basically, can I give you a little history on the plant? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. It was um, it's around the first time the village burned back in 1897 or in that era. Uh -huh. um, they, the fire precinct formed a water district, and the water treatment facility was basically uh, formed at that time. They put a dam in at the river, a wooden crib dam, and wow. had a canal going to the plant. And uh, filtration was its primary purpose. And um, over the hundred years it's evolved, but it still maintains a certain conventional type process where we have uh, the water, we take the water out of the river and treat it through the different processes. It's uh, uh, coagulation, sedimentation, and then filtration, um, and then we chlorinate the water. We also add fluoride to the water, which is mm -hmm. a big question people ask. What we yeah, do. sometimes people ask that. Um, and chlorinate the water as it's required for disinfection and maintain that residual throughout the distribution system. And uh, we sample the water, we monitor the water through the process with online instrumentation, and that way if anything seems to get awry if something you know should come in that we you know we're not aware of because the plant is running uh, all the time and it's being monitored all the time but you know if something should go awry this the monitoring mm -hmm. equipment shuts the plant down so we find out it alarms us mm -hmm. so we know mm -hmm. and uh, then the um, let's see I'm a little nervous. Oh, no, that's okay. Uh, because, you know, I was amazed when I went to visit because we had a little tour and I'm, I need to come back to both plants. Uh, but, but, but the technology you have in place, and I know we're, ups, we're really upgrading our, that the continuation of deployment of that technology right. in monitoring the operation of the plant. Um, and I, I found that very fascinating and very uh, interesting that we have uh, 
that kind of system that self it's so it's really sophisticated and uh, and does a, a really incredible job about monitoring the the, the water and its op and the plant's operations and, and and really has a lot of data that that it manages yes we collect it on time real time uh, information and we don't have yeah. any delays in there so that from a security standpoint I can't go into a lot of detail on yeah. what it is but we do monitor all the uh, regulatory re mm -hmm. parameters and and more but uh, the um, we monitor the distribution system also uh -huh. the water quality uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I'd like to just touch on one thing with that too yes. is that some people wonder about why we flush hydrants yeah right they're sorry and, say why you know I'm sure somebody wonders why the hydrants are being flushed right it's 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 required by the state that we do that for one thing and the other thing is it maintains a fresher quality to the oh, water okay. overall and the, the mains are large diameters in some places for yeah. to carry the water from one site to another and still you can have a low usage in that area but we're required to maintain a chlorine residual while also monitor for disinfection byproducts mm. so we kind of walk that line where we don't want to form disinfection byproducts but we want to maintain a disinfecting residual. So we have to do both of those, and it's a, mm -hmm. it's strategy you maintain mm -hmm. to, to do that. It's, it's kind of the way I, you know, one is a little bit part science, part art, and part, you know, just common sense judgment as you mm -hmm. look at this, you know, and, and so we have technology at our side, but but a lot of judgments are being made by, by people in our in our operation. Yes, because we do, we regulate the tank levels too. Yeah. We want to keep enough water in mm -hmm. the tanks so that they, they, mm -hmm. there's enough water for fire suppression and, and pressure and then still again we want to maintain a turnover in the tank so there's some anticipation to what you do yes you know so you yes. kind of anticipate your next if I do this then your next move is that or you know uh, that you can it's, it's uh, really it's really interesting <coughs> and I, I, I watch you know and can't you know I can't imagine you know the kind of, you have to have all this, your experience you have to have the knowledge you have to have the experience to help make judgments about things like this because it's, I'm sure that you just can't walk in a door and start doing stuff like this uh, no, without getting in deep and the deep hurt bag. Right. Well, there is, you know, I do have some college education. I don't have the degree, but I did go to school in Colorado to learn uh, hydraulics and, and chemistry mm -hmm. and uh, the basic the knowledge that I needed for the to do this job. Uh, but there is a lot of mechanics involved too. Yes, you have to have yes. a mechanical inclination. Mm -hmm. It's quite an array of different things. Uh, when you mentioned it, you know, it set off a, you know, one of my bells. When you mentioned we have to be careful about security needs, and I think that that, and, and then we're going to switch over to Don talk about wastewater a little bit. Then we're going to go back and forth a little bit. Um, but people should know, you know, how how um, careful the city is about security issues, because we are really the front line which is maybe all wasn't always so, but we are kind of front line to, you know, to for domestic or, or somebody from outside our country, anybody that, that looks for targets and Homeland Security, because I, when I was co-chairing uh, along with other, uh, with two others, uh, the, the Homeland Security District and region for Buffalo, which got a lot of money for Buffalo and Erie and Niagara County and New York, um, it was clear that the, that the one of our points of jeopardy were our, our plants, our water plants, our wastewater plants, places where people could, from from security experts, have, could be vulnerable, soft targets, uh, and so we have to be very watchful of, of that uh, in our in our operations. I know that. Could we talk a little bit about wastewater too, and then we're going to bounce back and forth. Mm -hmm. So would you describe that a little bit about you know, operations at wastewater and the, kind of a little bit of the history too, I kind of like uh, how we got here and then what we're doing now. Um, in terms of our facility? Yeah. In, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the plant was um, started in 1976. Uh, prior to that, the sewage was just discharged um, with in the stormwater drains, that's the uh, sewer separation project. That's where the se sewer separation projects start, I mean that whole issue that we have which is just incredible in terms of dimensions of work mm. to try to separate all our, our uh, well the targeted areas we have for separation of, of water and sewer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, at the time, the thought was just put it in the river and get rid of it. Yeah. Um, people that were around at the time tell me that the rivers, Mascoma River mm -hmm. in particular, changed colors regularly from the mills and industries upstream. Um, but again, in 1976, the plant was built um, and all the sewage in Lebanon was brought down to the treatment plant. All the piping was connected. Um, our plant uh, treats about, on average, 1.6 to 1.8 million gallons of sewage a day. Uh, the plant can treat up to 3.2 million gallons a day. Um, it's what's called a um, secondary activated sludge process. Mm -hmm. um, it's a physical chemical process. Um, I'm sorry, physical biological process yeah. mm -hmm. versus a at the water treatment plant, it's primarily physical, chemical. Mm -hmm. um, we remove um, about, on average, about 95% of the pollutants that are regulated by the EPA. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think of what other things I can mm -hmm. tell you about. So, so I was going to say, we're touching on the security issue, yeah. security is not quite as big an issue for us yeah. in that the impact from the damaging the wastewater mm -hmm. treatment plant is less direct than the, the impact water. on the water. Immediacy of the water. Yeah. yeah we don't have mm -hmm. any water supplies that draw out of the Connecticut River mm -hmm. downstream of us for quite a distance. I yeah. don't know if you yeah. know Mike no, I don't approximately, really. but it's quite a yeah. distance. Quite a distance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with regards to both water and, and, uh, and wastewater, um, we're always changing, you know. But Change is slow and gradual and incremental because to bring, have enough resources to make all the changes that are necessary in infrastructure, it takes, you know, you, it, you have to do financing, you have to do priorities, timing, you know, what other sources of dollars are there for these uh, changes, these changes that are needed. Because our infrastructure is na as a naturally, there's a de it, uh, deterioration of all infrastructure, no matter what kind. And some have differing rates in terms of deterioration or decaying of, of our infrastructure. So we have to be, keep on it because we don't want everything to go exactly at once out of out of service. Mm -hmm. And so we got to make our plans. And I, I know you guys have been really doing a lot of thinking and planning and, may, and looking at what changes are, are necessary and what's on the horizon, kind of the future of it. Um, now, I think any of the people on the panel here today, you can make comment about this kind of situation, but I think we ought to pass it around a little bit about what changes are we looking at, and for instance, in the water and the infrastructure, the plant, is there, uh, what's, on the, what's on the horizon as we both, uh, you know, the short termer and the next few years and then farther out, the next 10, 20, what will we be looking at, you think? Well, um, some time ago, in 2006, I believe, a Metcalf and Eddie, they did a, um, a survey of our system report, and uh, they came up with a list of things we should be looking at. We've addressed a lot of those, but there are some long-term uh -huh. things that we should be looking at, or we are looking at. I mean, yes. Basically, I'm not saying we should, but we are yeah. looking at the next three years, we're phasing uh, instrumentation and electrical upgrades. As I mentioned earlier, the plants been upgraded in the last hundred years. There's a portion of the plant that's still in the, on the footprint. On the same footprint of where it was. On the same footprint of where it was. Or the building is the same mm -hmm, section mm -hmm. of uh, building. Yes. And that's where my office is, where it's cold. Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> the uh, You want the some heat down there? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, where, where can we buy out, you know, like a hot pad or something? Yeah. Like, or <laughs> send something be, down uh, Jim's <laughs> way. <laughs> Get him a nice blanket. <laughs> that's what you do in the Army. You well, you feel cold, you have another blanket. This <laughs> <laughs> um, is not like the user friendly, so I take all that back. I didn't say that. No, no one heard that. <laughs> the uh, thing we are looking at now is instrumentation and the mechanics of the yeah. plant. You know, it was upgraded in, nine, in the late 90s. There was an upgrade, and some of the equipment is already. Um, not supported by the manufacturer and stuff yeah. like that. So they have a certain lifespan, don't they? On any of the yes, stuff we get, you know. I mean, it lasts so long, and then they'll they'll move on to a new line, and right. and they won't necessarily continue to service the old line because they they re had re uh, kind of re uh, engineered themselves in doing something different now, so they're not going to go back and pick the old right. stuff up. Well, 
I recently heard something that was expressed about a wastewater plant that had been operating continually for the last 35 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not like your car or um, a piece of equipment that you have, it, you know, has a, has a life in over 10 years, you just replace it. This equipment and some of our equipment and, and John's equipment operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, continuously for like the last 15 years. Yeah, wow. And so that racks up some hours. Yeah. You know, we have two high lift or three high lift pumps basically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were getting a lot of hours on them. Yes, you know, like yes. 50, 60,000 hours. We have to like schedule for rebuilding mm -hmm. them, replacing them. And we've done that. And so now we're trying to get into like, what are the mechanics of the plant or what structurally in the plant can we look forward to in the future as the demand grows now? Uh, there have been a couple of studies, and they both agree when we hit a certain daily demand for water and a max daily demand, then we should be looking at expanding the plant. Yes. Now, we're not near there yet. Yeah. You know, um, our water supply right now, we're about 1.7 million gallons a day. Mm -hmm. And that average, you know, it's an average. Okay? Yes. So we get uh -huh. some days it's 1 million even mm -hmm. another and the max day last year was 2.25 wow. wow. million so the um, what we're looking at is like how we could keep the plant so we've operated the plant with only half capacity yes. at its max and we know that we can mm -hmm. process 3.4 million gallons a day roughly or something like, around that yeah. I want to say three. Yeah. the number escapes me exactly but uh, it's around that number it's more than three million it's a very significant number and uh, the thing is, is that when you get to a certain point, you don't want to wait for that point to, for the expansion. Yeah. You want to get it soon enough. Soon enough. Soon enough. To, so that you're not running into um, yeah. the the, yeah. the crux of the having crux to be of, stuck. With yeah, it. you don't want to. You don't want to build yourself up to a, you know, a crisis mode where you know right. one of the things about public works is they're one of our really commit uh, committed. Uh, groups uh, about trying to be excellent in planning what they're doing. Um, I want to be sure now, uh, Don, once you cover, you know, the changes on the, uh, with regard to the wastewater plant that might be on the horizon near term and long term and okay. as we, we're getting in our last uh, three minutes or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, again, as I said, the plant's roughly uh, 37 years old mm -hmm. um, and much of the equipment there is original. Mm -hmm. And as Jim noted, a lot of it runs 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. seven days a week. There's no stopping. Um, it's quite a testament to the maintenance staff's um, work over the last 37 years. Um, so much of it's to do with getting new equipment in there rather than throwing money into old equipment, mm -hmm. getting new equipment. Um, what comes along with that a lot of times is improved efficiency. Yes. Uh, energy consumption can mm -hmm. be reduced. Um, we're also looking at um, renovating some of the infrastructure, the tanks, the concrete yes. is cracking and starting to, to, to come apart essentially. Uh -huh. And capping that off and stopping that is, um, is important to keep that building or those buildings and tanks around for another 20, 25 years, if not, well, 30 years probably, when yes. more appropriate. Um, we're also looking at um, um, retrofitting our biological process to remove uh -huh. nutrients. Uh, nutrients are a big problem. They actually are, act like fertilizers uh -huh. in the rivers and lakes, and uh, we're trying to remove those so they don't cause problems. Don't cause problems downstream. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, how many employees do you have in wastewater? It's a total of seven. So, and, and, and you, uh, Jim, in water? Um, three plus myself would be four. Yeah, that's, you know, that's not a heck of a lot of people, is mm -hmm. it? No. Um, I guess we, one of the things I wanted to do here is to show is, you know, compliment you both for your management of our plants and compliment the people that work in those plants because uh, it's really vital work for our community and to serve our citizens. And, you know, when we have the plants going and while we have technology there, if something starts going haywire, we'll get these notices to you and, and, and you'll be having to deal with it. And these people in our plants have to deal with it because they're out there kind of protecting us. And the, the idea of protecting uh, us, people that live here and we use the water and enjoy the wastewater um, accessibility and to, to help you know our daily lives. I think that I just commend all of you 
and the people that work in these plants because these are these are these are a lot these are a mix of um, of, of knowledge based jobs and they're a mix of people that really have to work hard with some in 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 in, in really environments that can be challenging in what we do mike as we as we work to close our our time today um, are there any things that you wanted to make sure that the citizens were aware of with regard to our public works operations? Well, I want to echo your uh, compliment to both the water and wastewater staff and the managers. Um, I appreciate what they do. They do a great job um, and the residents should feel very comfortable with uh, the level of and quality of uh, work that we have done. Uh, a couple projects Don mentioned um, about the um, upgrades. We've got a major upgrade project that just went to bid. Um, we'll be starting on that soon. And at the plant, we have a dredging project in addition to the, the SCADA upgrades where we have to dredge um, out in the river. But um, I just, we're very fortunate in Lebanon in water, wastewater, but all the other um, areas of public works. So you have very skilled um, people who are very dedicated to their job. Yeah, I, I love to see the blue trucks out um, in, 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 in doing all kinds of things. They're, I often talk about public works as being our army, and they truly are army. They're everywhere. Our army is out there, and it's, it's kind of good to have an army around. And, and we have our, our, our army engineers uh, at, these water, at these plants working, you know, the guys who are behind the scenes making sure that machinery is working. And, and so I guess we, we are celebrating um, public works today. Um, we look forward to serving you and, uh, from our public works department to all you citizens who are, you know, are in Lebanon and our region. Uh, you know, people talk about leaning forward anymore. There's been a popular book now, out on, and there's other people who are leaning forward. If there's anyone leaning for, forward here for us, I think it's the public works is leaning forward. They put their shoulder to the to the effort. They they are put. They're leaning forward, looking to the future for our water and our and our wastewater. So that, we're leaning forward, and we were. And I think they were all leaning forward before the book. So uh, with that, we wish you have a good day. And from the public works department and from the city of Lebanon, we. Thank you for uh, listening to our show, and I uh, hope you're good, having a really good uh, spring. Uh, summer's near, and we'll be talking to you soon. Have a great day.